Using this seemingly ugly tool that we have here, I'm gonna show you exactly where the viewer's eye is going to go when they're looking at your photographs and how important it is to know that so that when you're building your images, you can make images that viewers really truly want to engage with and not just photographs that just sit there, okay? Now, this is probably, I'll, I'll venture to say this is the most important thing I will probably ever teach you about your photographs and photography. However, before we jump into that and before I explain exactly how I'm going to show you that, we have to look at some painters first. And you're thinking, what? Why are we looking at painters first? Well, painters had a unique way of creating light in their images to get the viewer to look at what they wanted them to look at. They could create whatever light they wanted because they were painting the image, right? Well, you might think, well, we don't get that, but we do. We can control our tones in the exact same ways that painters do as well, but we have to know how painters do that before we can control our tones that way. So we're looking at here is an image by Francois Boucher, the landscape with a watermill. Now I want you to take a second here and just look at this and see where your eye goes to. You can even pause it if you want to, but I'm gonna press on, okay? But I want you to keep this in mind because I'm gonna show you where my eye goes to and then see if we can figure out how they did this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add a layer on here that's just gonna be for drawing. My eye basically starts right here somewhere up in this sky area. And then I'm drawn into the image. So we're gonna say that this is number one, okay? I'm drawn into the image. And the next place I see is where this light, this gorgeous bright light that's coming from is affecting other things like the people down here uh, throughout the image. Uh, so let's call that number two. And then I'm also looking at where the light is hitting on this area. So we'll call that number three. So that's essentially where my eye is looking when I look at this image. And Francois has done a masterful job of drawing me into the image and almost making it like this conical shape that just swirls around and gets me into the image. It's very um, cup shaped. You know, you get these dark tones on the outside that cup all of that beautiful light in the inside that make me want to interact with the image. Now, that's no different really than this image here from Salvatore Rosa, where you can see the light again. Pay attention to where the light is and where he has painted this light into the image. Now, if we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the other one, we can go ahead and look right here is where this light is coming through, kind of trunketed by this branch here, but still has that nice uh, light on the side of that tree there. We're brought right into what's happening here, but we start over here. It's almost like the beginning of a movie where the camera just starts to slowly pan in and there's some nice music that's happening. And then it's like, oh, here, here are the stars of our show. So we come in from over here. This is number one up here. Okay. And then we're brought down here to where the light is hitting on these individuals. Now that's all fine. And well, you have to have kind of a trained eye in order to see that, but is there a way that we can actually see where that light is in the image? And this is something that I've been experimenting with for an awfully long time. And I figured out a way to do it. So that's what I'm going to show you on where your eye is going based on where the light is in the image. And I do it with something called a viewer navigation map. It's a very simple, easy thing to do. I'm actually going to give you an action for this. If you want to download it, you're free to do that. It's a really simple thing. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a black and white adjustment layer or a gradient map, right? This gradient map is going to be from black to white. And what this gradient map does is it just takes all the color out of the image that would be considered a distraction and allows me to just see what the tonal values are in the image. But even then, reading tones in grayscale can be very difficult as well. We need to break it down a little bit further. So underneath this, I'm going to create a new layer called a posterized layer. No one really uses this posterized layer, right? Because I, like, there's really no use for it other than this. Very powerful use for this. Instead of having this set to four levels, set it to three levels, okay? So now once we have a posterized layer underneath the gradient map, it shows us exactly where the viewer's eye goes first, right? And I showed you that right here, look at that. And even pointed out all the different places where the viewer's eye goes. So let's, let's break this down and see what's happening here. This posterization image that you see right here is not good on color. It doesn't work very well with color. It might work to maybe show you some color information as to where the viewer might be reading those hot colors first, but it's not a very good thing. That's why this gradient map has to be on here. Uh, what that gradient map does is it just makes it so that all those colors become tones and it gives us a tonal evaluation of what's happening within the image. Now we'll take a look at that other painting. And instead, I'm just going to go into the action that I've created for you and just press play on this viewer navigation map. 
Okay, and once that viewer navigation map is on, again, let's turn on the drawing and see where our eye comes from, where it's going into the image. We start here and move in. What's happening and why? Well, our viewer is naturally going to go to the areas of highest highlight first and then get navigated into the image. And if you've ever seen any of the stuff that I've done, I always talk about color and how important color is, right? And color is critical. It's really important. I would say that there's three actual elements to your image that are critical. One is composition. That's what engages with the viewer. That's what makes them want to look almost in the first place. Two is going to be your tonal values and how it navigates the viewer throughout your image. And three is going to be your color and how it makes their mood feel when they look at the image. So if you've got composition nailed, but you don't have a good uh, tone navigation happening in there to get the viewer's eye to move around the image, they aren't really going to want to stick around to see your colors. And if your colors are great, but your composition isn't that great, it can actually kind of stand on its own because those colors are so beautiful, but it's really a trifecta package. Those three things are critical. And the master painters know that because they know how to draw your eye into the image, create a masterful composition, and then just have it nicely nestled with color as we see in this example image here. So now you're saying, Blake, how in the heck does this translate into photography? Well, I will show you. Actually, I just recently photographed this one on a workshop. Uh, it was actually a Joel Grimes workshop that I happened to be an attendee for. It was actually a lot of fun. I learned a ton about lighting, and Joel is a master of light. But let's go ahead. Let's press play on this tone navigation map. Where is the viewer's eye going to go to first? It's going to go to those areas of highest highlight first. Now, this is a finished image that I've done here. And the way I wanted to finish this image was to make the viewer make a connection between Pete, this man who's been working on this B-29 his whole life, and what that B-29 does. It flies. But without Pete, it doesn't fly. So the two things that I wanted the viewer to see in this image are Pete and where that aircraft is going to go and how that aircraft cannot get to where it wants to go without Pete. So now, what is the viewer looking at? It's looking at his facial features because that's where the area of those highlights or those whites are. It's looking at those white puffy clouds because that's where Pete is allowing them to go. But what we aren't looking at that's just nice treats throughout the image are those midtones that allow us to navigate throughout the image and embrace some of the other areas in the photograph. And even that very dark black that we have in the background that just allows us to only see what I want you to see in this image. Now, if we were to open up this folder, folder here, you're going to see that black and white assist. OK, um, this is a three level nav, nav map. We can change that to four levels so we can see as the three levels is like the first glance, what the viewer is going to see. But we can change that posterization level to four levels, five levels, or even six levels to see how the viewer transitions out into the photograph after it's embraced that original area that it's looking at, which would be the highest highlights. This works for any type of photograph. It doesn't matter if it's a landscape in Yosemite or a Pete in a hangar. This works every for every image because every image has tones. Every image has color. Every image has composition. Let's do an assessment of this image. We'll go ahead and press play on this. How I developed this image was I wanted you to see what's happening in the background first in Yosemite as that light blasts through and then the after effects of that light as it transitions through the valley. But did images like this always look like this? No, I had to do a lot of work in order to get it here. Now, I'll actually open up this image here, which is a good example. Here is where I started from on this image. And this is all the work that I did to create it to look like this. So now let's take this tone navigation map to another level so that you can see what it means to deliberately put the tones where you want them to be so the viewer navigates throughout the image. I'm going to go ahead and press play on this viewer navigation map. I'm going to turn off all the work that I did and look at this. The reason why this doesn't work is we don't have a very strong area of highlight, but we have too much of a transition of grayscale values and highlight values throughout the image and not enough of that black to stop the eye from going in different places. Once I did all the work that I did to this photograph, you can see that I deliberately wanted to place your eye right here in the center of this image and then see exactly how that light transitions throughout the photograph and even make almost stair steps along this tree here to where your eye is going to come in and navigate throughout the piece. It's very deliberately done. This is our job as a photographer is to deliberately navigate the viewer throughout the image so that when they come into our photograph, they see exactly what we wanted to see with them so that we can keep that communication between me and the viewer alive when I'm not there to tell them what's important. The tones help tell what's important when we aren't there to talk about the work.
As I said before, this works with any type of photograph. Let's go ahead and look at this image. This is actually the cover image to a recent course that I created. And this is where I talk about all of this tone assessment stuff. And this is all part of what I call tone theory. Very much like we have color theory, we have tone theory as well. I'm gonna go ahead and press play on this viewer navigation map on this image. Now, looking at this, we can, we're, we're directed right into where she is because she's the most prominent figure within this image. But there's still so much going on around the background that we look at everything else along the way. But when we're very deliberate about the tones and where we place them, we can make this a much more engaging photograph for the viewer to look at. We deliberately say, no, don't look at the sides first. I want you to look exactly right here and then I'll allow you to navigate your eye around that piece. And it's all done with very deliberate steps of what I call tone sculpting. Okay. Now tone sculpting can be done in many different ways from dodging and burning to uh, even some of these new concepts that I've created here. But what I just showed you here is probably the most important thing you will ever learn about your photography. And that is that your tones will navigate the viewer throughout the piece. And it's your responsibility to ensure that you're navigating the viewer the right way. You can't assume that they know where to look. You have to make them look there. I've made a new course called game of tones. <laughs> it's a whole course all about tone theory and many of these different tone theories that I have. I'm supplying you here with one action from that course. That's the tone navigation map. But there are several more actions included in that course as well. And it'll also teach you exactly how you sculpt those tones out to get your images to look like this. And if you want this action, go ahead and click here. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing because I do things like this in Photoshop all the time where I make difficult things relatively simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.